Good morning, friends. We are on Robert Graves, part two. A dead Boche. To you who read my songs of war, and only heard of blood and fame, I'll say you've heard it said before, war's hell, and if you doubt the same, today I found in Mehmet's wood a certain cure for lust of blood, where propped against a shattered trunk in a great mess of things unclean, sat a dead Boche, he scowled and stunk, with clothes and face sodden green, big-bellied, spectacled, crop-haired, dribbling black blood from nose and beard. The next war. You young friskies who today jump and fight in father's hay, with bows and arrows and wooden spears, playing at royal Welsh fusiliers. Happy though these hours you spend, have they warned you how games end? Boys, from the first time you prod and thrust with spears of curtain rod, from the first time you tear and slash your long bows from the garden ash, or fit your shaft with a blue jay feather, binding the split tops together, from that same hour by fate you're bound as champions of this stony ground, loyal and true in everything, to serve your army and your king, prepared to starve and sweat and die under some fierce foreign sky, if only to keep safe those joys that belong to British boys, to keep young Prussians from the soft, scented hay of father's loft, to stop young Slavs from cutting bows and bendy spears from Welsh hedgerows. Another war soon gets begun, a dirtier, a more glorious one. Then, boys, you'll have to play all in if the cruelest team will win. So hold your nose against the stink and never stop too long to think. Wars don't change except in name. The next one must go the next one must go just the same. And new foul tricks unguessed before will win and justify this war. Kaisers and Czars will strut the stage once more with pomp and greed and rage. Courtly ministers will stop at home and fight to the last drop. By the million when men will die in some horrible agony. The children there will thrust and poke, shoot and die and laugh at the joke, with bows and arrows and wooden spears, playing at Royal Welch, Fusiliers. Escape. August 6, 1916. Officer previously reported died of wounds, now reported wounded. Graves, Captain R, Royal Welch, Fusiliers. But I was dead, an hour or more. I woke when I'd already passed the door that Cerberus guards, and half- Halfway down the road to Leth, as an old Greek signpost showed, above me on my stretcher swinging by, I saw new stars in the subterranean sky. A cross, a rose in bloom, a cage with bars, and a barbed arrow feathered in fine stars, I felt the vapors of forgetfulness float in my nostrils. Oh, may heaven bless, dear lady Prosperpine, who saw me wake and stooping over me for henna's sake, cleared my poor buzzing head and sent me back breathless with leaping heart along the track. After me roared and clattered angry host of demons, heroes, and policemen ghosts. Life, life, I can't be dead, I won't be dead. Damned if I'll die for anyone, I said. Cerberus stands and grins above me now, wearing three heads, lion and lynx and sow. Quick, a revolver, but my Webley's gone, stolen, no bombs, no knife, the crowd swarms on, bellows, hurls stones, not even a honeyed sop, nothing. Good Cerberus, good dog, but stop. Stay, a great luminous thought, I do believe. There's still some morphia that I bought on leave. Then swiftly Cerberus, wide mouths I cram. Then swiftly Cerberus, wide mouths I cram, with army biscuit smeared with ration jam. And sleep lurks in the luscious plum and apple. He crunches, swallows, stiffens, seems to grapple with all the powerful poppy. Then a snore, a crash. The beast blocks up the corridor. With monstrous hairy carcass, red and done, too late, for I've sped through, O oh life, O oh sun. The Bow of Nonsense An idol, back from the psalm two fusiliers, limped painfully home, the elder said, Robert, I've lived three thousand years this summer, and I'm nine parts dead. But if that's true, if that's truly so, I cried, quick now, through those great oaks, and see the famous bow. Where once a nonsense built, where once a nonsense built her nest with skulls and flowers and all things queer in an old boot with patient breast hatching three eggs in the next year fold thirteen squamous young beneath and rid wails of droop melancholy and psalm she did said he before this quaint mood fails will sit and weave a nonsense hymn hanging it up with monkey tails in a deep grove all hushed and dim two glorious yellow bunch banana trees planted in dreams by piaus portuguese which men are wise beyond their time, and worship nonsense, no one more. Hard by, among old heaths and lime, they've built a temple with no floor, 
and whosoever worships in that place, he disappears from sight and leaves no trace. Once the Galatians built a fane to sense what duller god than that. But the first day of autumn rain, the roof fell in and crushed them flat. I, for a roof of subtle as logic falls, when nonsense is foundation for the walls. I tell him old Galatian tales. He caps them in quick Portuguese, while phantom creatures with green scales scramble and roll among the trees. The hymn swells. On a, on a bow above us sings. A row of bright pink birds flapping their wings. Not dead. Walking through trees to cool my heat and pain, I know that David's with me here again. All that is simple, happy, strong is he. Caressingly I stroke rough bark of the friendly oak. A brook goes bubbling by, the voice is his. Turf burns with pleasant smoke. I laugh at chopping and at primroses. All that is simple, happy, strong is he, he is. Over the whole wood in a little while breaks his sl slow smile. The assault heroic. Down in the mud I lay, tired out by my long day of five damned days and nights, five sleepless days and nights, dream snatched, and set me where the dungeon of despair looms over desolate sea frowning and threatening me with aspect high and steep, a most malignant keep. My foes that lay within shouted and made a din, hooted and grinned and cried, Today we've killed your pride. Today your ardor ends. We've murdered all your friends. We've undermined by stealth your happiness and your health. We've taken away your hope. Now you may droop and mope to misery and to death, but with my spear of faith, stout as an oaken rafter, with my round shield of laughter, with my sharp tongue-like sword that speaks a bitter word. I stood beneath the wall and there defied them all. The stones they cast I caught and alchemized with thought into such lumps of gold as dreaming misers hold. The boiling oil they threw fell in a shower of dew refreshing me. The spears flew harmless by my ears, struck quivering in the sod, there like the prophet's rod, but leaves out, took from root, and bore me instant fruit. My foes are all astounded, dumb-stricken and confounded. Gaping in a long row, they dare not thrust nor throw. Thus, then, I climbed a steep buttress and won the keep and laughed and proudly blew my horn. Stand to, stand to, wake up, sir. Here's a new attack. Stand to, stand to. Have a good day, friends.